Over the past few months, I've been releasing Zen 5 leaks almost as relentlessly as AMD has been innovating. Now, these leak videos have ranged from divulging core counts and architecture names to leaking exciting details about AMD finally releasing Mega APUs. But between those two videos, there was one video that I believe has had some of its details fly below the radar for how important those details are. Now, to be clear, most websites jumped on reporting the most clickbaity aspect of that Cinebench Zen 5 leak. Of course, the Cinebench score that shattered Zen records so far and also showed that the IPC leaks I put out for Zen 5 are dead on. Zen 5 is going to be a big performance increase over Zen 4. That's what most people talked about because, well, that is probably the most exciting thing that gamers care about. But additionally, though, in that leak, via a screenshot of Windows Task Manager running on an early Zen 5 system, we saw that the performance seemingly was only coming from an L1 cache increase and then just, I guess, a fundamental architecture upgrade that's so good that AMD doesn't need a bunch more L2 and L3 to get higher IPC this generation. And since that video was out, I've had other sources, as discussed in Broken Silicons, say that that sample had an AI chiplet in it. I'll say more about that later in this video. And also that the L1 and L2 and L3 caches reported in that Windows Task Manager seemed to be correct. I've had more sources tell me that since then. And then later, though, after those videos I put out, Adora TV gave us a peek into what might be going on with the Zen 5 architecture when he leaked in a video that Zen 5 has ladder L3 cache. But in addition to that, Jim also talked about Zen prototypes that had various increases in L2 and L3 cache, although a lot of people have been misquoting what he said in the video. Let's actually listen to what he said. AMD has CPUs in their labs with 2 megabyte and 3 megabytes of L2 cache per core. And if you recall, Zen 4 has just doubled the L2 from 512 kilobytes up to 1 megabyte. Well, now I can exclusively reveal they have working chips with as much as 3 megabytes of L2 per core. And I don't know if these chips are based on Zen 5 or earlier architectures. But whether or not we see 2 megabyte and 3 megabyte of L2 cache per core with Zen 5, that's anyone's guess just now. Indeed, anyone who bothered to watch even a couple minutes of Jim's video would have heard him say he's not sure that that prototype with those cache sizes was a Zen 5 prototype. I would personally infer that it is a Zen 6 prototype, but it could also be what he thought it might be, some prototype from Zen 3 or Zen 4 that never came out, AMD was just testing different cache sizes to see what performance increases they got with different amounts. And unfortunately though, that's not what a lot of websites reported. And I don't want to dwell on the websites misreporting them, only say that I do get annoyed when I see ridiculous headlines like leakers can't agree on Zen 5 from websites that didn't even bother to watch one of our leaks. See, Leakers are not disagreeing on what's in Zen 5. There are just two categories of leakers. There's people like me that actually have benchmarks and product slides and roadmaps that I show you in my videos proving this is what Zen 5 is. And then there is a, I don't know, human centipede line of fake leakers that just shove out crap and confuse PC gamers that just want to know what's coming out in a year. But you know what? That confusion, I hope to end it today because I have an updated roadmap from this quarter that shows that Turin X has 1.5 gigabytes of L3 cache. But if we divide that by the 128 cores Turin X has, and then compare that to Genoa X divided by 96 cores, yep, look at that. The same amount of L3 per core as I've been reporting for, I believe, over a month now. And furthermore, I have to point out my Strix Halo leak already showed slides that said that Strix Point has the same amount of L3 cache per core as Phoenix, and that Strix Halo has the same amount of L3 cache per core as Dragon Range and Desktop Zen 4. And so look, it's settled. AMD is about to release an architecture that I have shown in benchmarks, not just things I made up, 
is about 25 to 35 percent better than Zen 4, depending on how the clock speeds turn out. And that's not from a bunch more cash and bigger dies and all this other stuff. No, it's just a similar node N5 to N4, but AMD has fundamentally redesigned the architecture. And that's very exciting because that means without a significant node difference, the rough cost of a Zen 5 desktop CPU should be the same as a Zen 4 desktop CPU. But that's not all I have to say in this video. Not just talking about cash. I have a new roadmap that confirms just about everything leaked up until now from this channel and even gives us a peek at when Zen 5 products are launching and it includes some three nanometer surprises. And so I hope you stick around to see the rest of this video, but first an ad from a sponsor. Jessie isn't very good at handling email services, as hard as she tries. So instead of hiring my dog back there, I recommend using Mailgun. This piece of content is sponsored by Mailgun. Mailgun is an easy to use and powerful data-driven email delivery service that empowers development teams to reach customers at scale to grow an organization, send and track your transactional and marketing messages, prevent fake signups and remove invalid email addresses from lists quickly, and partner with experts to improve deliverability and drive higher conversion rates. Look, Mailgun's powerful email API, intuitive marketing solutions, and send time optimization capabilities are helping hundreds of thousands of companies and leading brands around the world like DHL, Wikipedia, Toastlift, and Microsoft send 240 billion smart emails a year and it's never been easier to start sending with Mailgun than today by clicking the link in the description. Clicking this link in the description helps support Moore's Law is dead a ton on its own, even if you don't need it. And if you do, well, they have a great service. And I do want to thank Mailgun for sponsoring this piece of content. And hopefully, thank you, person watching this, for clicking that link in the description and trying out their product. Try Mailgun today. All right, now before I get to the bulk of this leak, I have to lay a few ground rules so you understand what you're looking at when I put it on screen. First of all, please understand that what you are about to see is a server products roadmap. AM5 products are on this roadmap, but they're not do-it-yourself gaming AM5 products. They're AM5 server products products, probably mostly for the embedded segments, and those typically release long after the gaming desktop variants are out. In fact, when I look at what AM4 server products are mostly used for right now, which does seem to be embedded, oh, look at that. As far as I can tell, AMD just got done launching Zen 3 AM4 to embedded like a month ago. And actually before that, the only Zen 3 embedded products they had seemed to be based on Rembrandt as far as I can tell. And so what I'm saying is it's not like we can be sure when a do-it-yourself product is coming out based on what's shown on a server roadmap. We can't be 100% sure, but they do tend to launch before the server products. And so if you see a Zen 5 product in production for server at a certain time, you can almost entirely take it to the bank. The desktop product will launch at that point or maybe even notably before it. Oh, and in addition to that, I also want you to keep in mind, this is an actual Zen 5 roadmap, but I did change the coloring and move a couple things around to do the minimum to protect my sources as I always do, because I won't get great leaks like this if I hurt my sources. But anyways, enough yabbering on, let's put this roadmap on screen. All right, so the first thing I would highlight on this roadmap just to get this out of the way is a bunch of little things that have already been leaked are confirmed now, like Genoa X's cache size, the codename Serrano is the successor to Sienna, and the fact that Zen 5, as I've already discussed in this video, has the same amount of L3 cache per core as Zen 4. But after that, the first thing that's probably jumping out to gamers is the fact that Granite Ridge looks like it's hitting production way later than expected. But then I have to remind you, this is a server roadmap. These are talking about products like embedded AM4 in AM5. And embedded products tend to launch about a year after the gaming desktop variants. Now, that doesn't mean that I think we should take it to the bank that just because it shows embedded AM5 Zen 5 products launching and early quarter one of 2025 that we should assume the gaming variants are going to launch either at the end of 2023 or early early 2024 but i think it's 
fairly safe to assume that gaming desktop Zen 5 is now confirmed to be launching in the first half of 2024. And frankly, based on the conversations I've had with my sources, they think it should be ready quarter two or maybe even quarter one. And then if we look at Turin Classic production targets, it's clear that this thing should be ready by mid-2024, which is exciting. And again, people I asked around today said that this roadmap is conservative, that AMD should, at least with limited customers, have Turin Classic out in the first half of 2024. Although I just do have to unfortunately acknowledge that based on what I'm seeing in this roadmap, even if it comes to gamers before it does server that the Vcash variants of Zen 5 are almost assuredly going to come one to three quarters after the launch of non-Vcash Zen 5, and so there's still going to be that lag time. Although, at the end of the day, it still means that Zen 5 with Vcash should be ready to launch around at least when Arrow Lake does, so AMD will have Zen 5 with Vcash ready for its competition, which is honestly all they really need it to be out by and for. But now that we have addressed that... There is one other thing that I'm wondering if all of you have been screaming at the monitor about already, and that's that Turin Dense seems to be hitting at least risk production and some low-level volume production for customers before Turin Classic, which I've already leaked. Turin Dense is on 3 nanometer. Turin Classic is on 4 nanometer. And I'm sure there's tons of people watching this video pulling their hair out now saying, wait, how could 3 nanometer be ready in early 2024? I thought that it was a complete mess. And then I just have to remind you guys, on a recent Broken Silicon with SemiWiki founder Daniel Nenny, he stated that while TSMC 3 nanometer is definitely six months behind schedule, and keep in mind, this delay could have pushed AMD over the edge in deciding to dual source Zen 5 for 4 nanometer and Zen 5C for 3 nanometer. It supposedly, according to Daniel, will still be fully functioning with good yields by the end of the year. And so, yeah, I think there's a solid chance, based on this roadmap, that when TSMC 3 nanometer started having issues like a year ago, AMD said, well, let's not take any risks. Let's make sure one of our variants is on 4 nanometer and one of our variants is on 3 nanometer. Well, especially because the mainstream variants on 4 nanometer will probably be able to clock higher and be significantly cheaper anyways. So it's probably a good decision to use 4 nanometer, even if 3 nanometer was ready at the same time. And then it also became clear recently to AMD, I think, that Intel is planning to accelerate the deployment of Sierra Forest, which is Turin Dense's main competition. And then also, maybe TSMC 3 nanometer, well, it had early issues, has gotten its act together. And so AMD said, well, if we can launch Turin Dense sooner rather than later, we should do so, so we can preempt the launch of Intel Sierra Forest. And then, after seeing this and discussing it with a couple of contacts, I further consulted an NVIDIA source of mine, finally asking if this person was worried about TSMC 3 nanometer issues holding up the release of Blackwell. And this person told me they had zero concerns of Blackwell being delayed due to TSMC 3 nanometer, that everything seemed great. And in fact, I reached out to someone at TSMC that I rarely consult with, and the person got right back to me and said, yeah, look, 3 nanometer had issues at first. It was delayed six months. So any product planning to be produced in the first half of 2023 would have undoubtedly had some problems. But any products coming out even like half a year to a year after that, well, it had problems and then they were fixed. And once they're fixed, they're fixed. That TSMC 3 nanometer products next year will have as good or better yields than 5 nanometer. It's full steam ahead. There is nothing to worry about any more. And so... Yeah, that's really exciting, I think. All right, so because I've just thrown so much information at you so quickly with that Zen 5 roadmap, I thought it would be a good idea to, at the end of this video, just summarize 
the things I've noticed in this roadmap and the conclusions that I am drawing here in a succinct way. So first of all, Zen 4C, Bergamo, and Siena should be ready to launch by late quarter two of this year, or frankly right now, I think they're well produced and just preparing to launch in high volume. Additionally, Zen 4 Genoa X has up to 1.152 gigabytes of L3 cache and should easily be ready to launch in this quarter as well. Zen 5 Turn Classic goes up to 128 cores. We now have a roadmap confirming it and 500 watts, and that should launch by quarter three of 2024. But I have to underline the word buy because a lot of sources tell me this roadmap's being conservative, and based on how well testing's going, they think it could be pushed up to quarter one or quarter two. Additionally, Zen 5 Turn X, that's Zen 5 with Vcache on server, goes up to 1.536 gigabytes of L3 cache and should be ready to launch in the first half of 2025. Zen 5C Turin Dense goes up to 192 cores and 500 watts and should be able to low volume launch by quarter two of 2024. And additionally, Turin AI is its own distinct product that I've already talked about in previous content that should launch by early 2025 in low volume. And Zen 5C Serrano is now basically triple confirmed as the successor to Sienna and should launch in the first half of 2025 with up to 64 cores still, only 64 unfortunately, but 225 watts. And then Zen 5 has the same L3 cache per core as Zen 4 and tops out at 16 cores and 170 watts on AM5, so no um, power consumption increase it seems with the initial wave of products at least and the server variants of Zen 5 AM5 Granite Ridge into production in early 2025 and it seems like AMD is prioritizing the release of Zen 5 C3 nanometer products over Zen 5 and server to preempt Intel Sierra Forest launch and that AMD should be able to at least launch Zen 5 on AM5 to gamers in the first half of next year and that that should at least then be able to paper launch the Vcash variants of those by the end of 2024. And look, it could be a placeholder, but I do think you have to notice that AM5 row lists two-channel DDR5 and 28 lanes of PCIe 5.0 for all products until this roadmap ends, which it ends in quarter three of 2025. It seems highly likely to me that there are very, very minor updates to the top chipset or maybe no updates for AM5 until Zen 6 behinds higher memory speed support and better stability, but those might just come from Zen 5 itself. They might not need to give you a new chipset. And so because of that, Zen 6 seems to be launching quarter four 2025 at the earliest, which would make a lot of sense. You know, that's about a year and a half after Zen 5 launches to gamers. And TSMC 3 nanometer seems to be almost entirely back on schedule after the standard M3 version had issues, but those issues are now solved. And so there you go. I don't have that much more to say in this video about competitiveness between AMD and Intel because I think it should be pretty obvious to everybody what's about to happen here. AMD is accelerating their three nanometer Turin dense products most likely because they don't want to let Intel be able to claim that Intel has regained the core count dominance crown now obviously if you watch my last video talking about upcoming intel products you would have seen that it would have been a pretty hollow victory for intel considering those 144 sierra forest cores launching supposedly in the first half of next year don't even have the ipc of ice lake and they don't even have hyper threading i don't think sub ice lake performance cores lacking hyper threading 144 of them would stand a chance against even 128 standard turin classic cores but maybe amd doesn't want to let intel have any victories and launch if they can and it seems like from what i've heard from my nvidia and tsmc sources that tsmc 3 nanometer is doing fine if amd can it seems like they want to make sure they launch a 192 core before intel launches a 144 core and steal the limelight and again i feel like i keep saying this at the end of all of my cpu videos Arrow Lake and Granite Rapids better not get delayed. They need to come out, honestly, if you ask me, by quarter three of next year. Because if they don't, seems like they're going to slip to the year Zen 6 is coming out. And if they do, I just... I don't know. I don't think it's going to be pretty for the company financially. But that's going to just about do it for everything I have to say in this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy this video, please 
hit the like button. Please comment. Tell me what you think about this leak in the comments. And then, of course, please double check that you're subscribed to the Moore's Law is Dead YouTube channel and ring the bell button so you don't miss all of those upcoming leaks. That really helps the channel when you subscribe. And additionally, please consider supporting our sponsors if you need their products. And if you have an extra 2 or even like $4 a month, Support Moore's Law is Dead on Patreon. You'll get early ad-free access to Broken Silicon, the ability to ask questions on the show, the ability to get access to a bunch of exclusive vid die shrink videos. New one just recently came out. And you also get the ability to ask guests questions. Hardware Unboxed is coming on later this week to talk about recent mobility releases and monitors and all and DLSS and FSR testing. So you can ask them questions if you have them. If you support us on Patreon. But for everybody else, no matter what, thank you for watching. <laughs>